Sorry about that, folks. But, oh yeah. What's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. One second. I turned the volume a little bit too loud. But today, oh yeah, we're going over some more Neapolic war black metal. Napoleonic, I'm sorry. War black metal. Departure Chandelier, and one of probably the best modern black metal demos I've heard in a long time. I mean, it's about 10 years old now, but wow. The Black Crest of Death, the Gold Wreath of War, this leading into Antichrist Rise to Power. Oh my goodness. And part of the patron this month fingers are crossed departure chandelier the papal 12 inch not the 10 inch picture disc that was going for like a hundred dollars i waited so i don't want to spoil it but yeah it's it's going to be a sick month for the patron but when it comes to departure chandelier just some of the best black metal in the game and this was originally released in 2011 as an edition of 500 demo cassettes on tour de garde performed and recorded autumn 2010 at the prisoner's chant and just absolutely like such a great predecessor to antichrist rise to power but you have Side Nobleman and Side Sadist. The intro, Candle Below the Rope, leads right into the title track. The Black Crest of Death, The Gold Wreath of War. Then, Concentrating the Flame of Resistance leads into the outro, The Imperial Candle. June 2nd, 1740. Hark! By holding this in your dead hands, you lock the prison irons on your own. Slit wrist and bear witness before the court to the following laws of opposition. No innocence without coration. No bounty without theft. No education without dementia. No pity nor pity. Without sadism, friendship without deception, justice without persecution, that nobility cowers in the shadow of prediction. No pity, no piety, cleared of sodomy, no purity without sin, neither is the creator without nihilism, no civilization without instinct, no head spared separation from the body. That hate doesn't need a reason. That freedom cannot coincide with security and there can be no genius without liberty and death. Hail dark forces. 2nd of December, 1814. Now, I like these little threats that Departure Chandelier put on their releases. Like, Antichrist Rise to Power has a real nice one also. These are great reissues, and I am beyond grateful that Departure Chandelier, like, had a part in this. I'm at Nuclear War now, like, doing the reissues and stuff, because... I really, like, legitimately wrote this off. Like, you're never going to own it. Whatever. But now it's like, I almost have the entire discography on vinyl. I'm just hoping that uh, PH gets my email I sent him with all the links and stuff. Before 
the um, secret 10 inch. Well, it's not a 10 inch anymore. It's a 12 inch on this reissue. But it was like a secret demo or something along those lines. But yeah, I can't fucking wait. Because it's so good. Like, I, I cheated and listened because it was just out of my price range. And then all of a sudden, like, I was like, holy shit, 25 bucks? Like, oh my goodness. On colored vinyl, also, like, sick. And this is also on colored vinyl, which is awesome. I was not one of the 30 people to get a copy on color of Antichrist Rise to Power, but I don't care because the tunes just make up for it because it's so fucking good. And color vinyl really doesn't matter, but it's gr it does look phenomenal. And Departure Chandelier's music. It's just a very cosmetically fitting color. And when it comes to Nuclear War now, they don't do like, you know, eight different color variants. Nah, they keep it simple. It's normally like a diehard color. Maybe two. And black vinyl. And... The poster that comes with this is so sick also. I'll pull it out. But I love, like, Sadist. There's so much cool just shit hidden within this bad boy. It does require, like, multiple listens to really soak every little detail in. The excitement of death. I like how it's crossed out and it says... Departure Chandelier. Like, I, I just, I love this layout. It's just really fucking cool. I, I love this band. Like, I really do. And trust me, it's hard for me to really, you know, get into certain black metal. But this is just everything that, you know... Musically, I really love about the genre, and it's just done at a higher level, I feel, than, you know, almost anyone else. Departure Chandelier, like, one of my favorite modern black metal bands. First Quebec slash New York Alliance 2010 demo recorded at grave level. Behind the Otis Cemetery in Manhattan, Hail Dark Forces. Napoleonic War Black Metal. I always forget how to pronounce that. Is it Napoleonic? Napoleonic? Whatever. But yeah. Napoleonic War Black Metal. So good. Everything about this record, the production, just the riffs, the atmosphere especially, it's just on a whole nother level and it's just great. It's just one of those demos that doesn't get old. Has a ridiculous vinyl press. I forget again if this is on 180. For some reason, I feel like these reissues were all 180, but I'm not. Look at that color. It's so dope. Like, when you put it in the sun, you can really, like, see through it. And it has, like, all these, like, crazy... It's just it's just a really nice cosmetic, you know, color choice. And, again, like, nothing too fancy. It's just keeping it fucking real. But the artwork, it's just fantastic. Like, 
I really hope I can get the new secret demo on vinyl. The, I think it's Dripping Papal's Blood. Uh, I forget off the top of my head, but uh, yeah, it the emails have all been sent. The links have been sent also. I'm just looking on here if there's any little thing I'm missing. Nope, made in the Czech Republic. But I'm kind of curious. I might just email YK. I want to know who pressed the Barthron record I went over yesterday. Just because uh, I just realized, like, okay, they're still using a pressing plant in the Czech Republic. I'm guessing Pirates Press. I'm not sure, though. But with the bear, with the um, His Majesty at the Swamp reissue, it's technically on Necro Abyssius's. <laughs> Necro Abyssius's. It's on his record label. Technically. See? Order of the Blood Dog. And made in Italy. So. You know, it's not a nuclear... It's Order of the Blood Dog Presents. But it's, you know, a nuclear war now release. Well, reissue, but... Yeah, it's kind of, I was I'm just a little tiny confused about that. But DOG001, colored vinyl. I'm very... I'm so grateful to have this. Especially because it's a gift for doing vocals on a upcoming release. And, yeah, mandatory listening for any fan of underground music. I say the same holds up for Departure Chandelier. Because you might not even be a fan of black metal. You're going to find something about this demo that's fucking badass. And you're going to be like, whoa, that was cool. Like, you, you feel like Beavis and Butthead, like, listening to this. Because there's parts where it's just, like, legit. You're just like, whoa. Like, that was cool. And that, that's all there is to say, because that, that's all that needs to be said. It's just... Yes. Fucking yes. And it takes a lot these days for a band to really, you know... Put out something that for, you know, a long time I was chasing after. And here it is. And in my opinion, you know, I would love this on cassette. I would love their entire discography on cassette. But I am beyond grateful that, you know, my vinyl collection of Departure Chandelier, I only have that one left. And I pulled the trigger but my buddy, he needs to 100% pull the trigger. Hopefully, he will, because he's he has the money and everything. But this bad boy led into Antichrist Rise to Power. I'm not sure if they were recorded during the same session, but they both were performed and recorded in 2010 at the Prisoner's Champ. And they both were recorded below grave level across from... Because it's the same place. But, yeah. The full length. So good. But the demo. It's one of those situations. Pick your poison. Because... Really quick. Let me just check something. Yep. So, these tracks... Do not appear on the full length. They are completely separate. So don't worry. It's not like you're just getting, you know, some weekly recorded demo tracks. No. You're getting, like, album quality demo material. It's fucking great. Like, the Black Crest of Death, the Gold Wreath of War, A fucking plus. Like... Departure Chandelier not only has done their homework when it comes to creating interesting black metal that, you know, speaks to more than just your typical, you know, 
black metal fan that just buys everything Iron Bonehead, Go to War X puts out. Like, and I'm nothing wrong with that, but like, I know there's a lot of people in black metal. Ugh, that's hipster shit. Just based on the logo. <laughs> people are kooky when it comes to black metal sometimes, and you just gotta ignore it. Like, really, you, it, you're best just ignoring it. Like, if somebody's, like, if you're wearing, like, a non-yellow goat, like, battery shirt, and somebody, you know, asks why the goat's yellow, like, I feel like you probably should know why, but, like, if, if, you, if you like Bathory, who the fuck cares? If that's the only shirt you can get, and you, you know, don't have the Bathory history lesson memorized, who cares? Like, I, I understand, like, the yellow goat is, like, you know, that's... We all know what it is and how important the yellow goat press is of the Bathory self-titled, but Departure Chandelier sound like Departure Chandelier. And that's why I love this band so much. Because they just have it. And what I mean by it is you have a full like lineup pretty much, not just one person, there's nothing, and I, I love one man black metal, but the fact that you have more chefs in the kitchen, and it just, I feel like sometimes it makes for a better record, and this is a perfect example of having, you know, not just like a one man black metal project, but having Three individuals putting their ideas into the songs. Yeah. But I don't know which side I like the most. Side Nobleman is fucking great. Side Sadist, just as good. It's legitimately a grade A black metal demo. And I love this glossy cover also. Again, I'm a nerd for this type of shit. Like... When you get a demo like this compared to some other like vinyl demos I have, it's like absolutely top notch from a cosmetic and sound quality perspective. Now, I don't want to shit talk any specific labels, but like here is an example of a demo on vinyl. But it was pretty much shipped. I'm not even going to show you which band it is. But um, it was pretty much shipped in a pizza box. I'm just going to show you the actual, just, I don't, it's one of, like, I don't, when you get, it is what it is. It does the job. But, oh my goodness. There's, you know. It's like they just put it on vinyl instead of, like, a 12-inch instead of a 7-inch just so they could charge more. And that's cool. Like, I legit, I have plenty of single size, you know, 12 inches. But sometimes it's like, all right, like just put it on a 7-inch or, like, a 10-inch. But I, I love sometimes just having everything on 12 inches of wax. It just makes life easier but sometimes you know not everybody handles demos especially 10 year old demo reissues on vinyl as lovingly as nuclear war now dark descent records another great great example extremely rotten has been killing it lately and 
Hell's Headbangers, like, those Last Days of Humanity reissues, these things came out so nice. I actually want to listen to this later. The sounds of sloshing. So good. But, like, Hell's, they don't play either when it comes to, you know, vinyl reissues. Like, Gatefold, you know, Gnarly. Really glossy. Yeah, they don't play. But, yeah. Some labels, it's just a fucking money grab. And that's a bummer. It really is. It's a fucking bummer sometimes. It's just like, ah, oh, god damn it, like, come on. Like, you, sh you should, if you're reissuing something, put some fucking tender, like, you should be loving what you're reissuing. Like, it shouldn't be, like, a fucking hassle. So sometimes I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, a great example, again, like, Gilad Media, when they do a reissue, it's fucking fantastic. Like, my Mismore self-titled is absolutely fucking massive. And again, Gilad, every reissue I have is just, like, top fucking shelf. It's just killer quality. And this vinyl release, it was first released on CD by ALN in 2012. Oh, shit. Vinyl release by Gillard Media 2021. Wait a minute. Is this the first vinyl press of the self-titled? And am I just drawing a blank? This is on this, like, again, it matches the cover. Like, it's just killer. And it's a double LP. Gillard also, like, they don't fuck around. And I, lo I love that shit. And I could go over tons of labels like that, but then there's, you know, bigger labels that when they do their reissues, it's not something, like, special where there's only maybe one or two color variants aside from black. When you get a reissue and there's like 12 different colors to choose from, it's kind of just like, man, like, I, I just don't get it sometimes. Like, this is all I need. Whoops. Like, I would love the death cassette collection of my favorite death records, but I don't have it. So... I'm just happy with my <laughs> very limited edition of 2,000 blood red copy of Scream Bloody Gore. Because it sounds fantastic. And uh, this is a 2016 reissue. But I just, I always thought it sounded good. So I, you know. I'm not one of those people that are going to go out and get every single color variant. For me, you know, I felt like you couldn't really go wrong with red when it came to Scream Bloody Gore. It just felt like it fitted. It was either like that or black vinyl. Like, yeah, they have like all those like gnarly colors and shit. And some of them, like, they look awesome and all, but I was just like, I, I just want a copy of this. <laughs> like, that's all. And, yeah. Scream Bloody Gore. Great reissue. But Relapse, I feel like they hold a lot of records hostage. And it fucking sucks. Because if you look at their, you know, massive discography, there's some really good shit in there that hasn't been reissued in like 18 years in some cases sometimes it, they've never been reissued and will they ever i don't know but don't you know
know, this reissue right here, the Black Crest of Death, the Cold Reef of War. Yeah, don't let your hopes up, because this bad boy literally flew into my hands, and I'm beyond grateful for it. Departure Chandelier, the Black Crest of Death, the cult, the Gold Reef of War on Nuclear War Now Productions out of Austin, Texas. Fuck yeah. And again, this was originally released in 2011 as a limited 500 demo cassette on Tour de Garde and performed and recorded autumn 2010 at the Prisoner's Chant, New York City. Grade A black metal, Departure Chandelier. Fuck yeah. Get your Napoleon on. <laughs> Maybe you can eat some, like, Napoleon ice cream and listen to some Antichrist Rise to Power. But, now nah, this is just a total banger, front to back. And same with the demo. And when it comes to black metal demos, it's kind of the same with death metal. Like, a lot of black metal demos are better than the albums sometimes, but this is its own monster. Like, the album, absolutely amazing, but this is also absolutely amazing because I don't think Departure Chandelier has ever written a mediocre song. Like, I really hope I get the other demo. And, yeah, I sent the links out, so fingers crossed. Pat, if you watch this, pull that trigger. And listen to Departure Chandelier. For real. Pick your poison. I know I don't have the Papal demo. Hopefully, it will be here soon, but, yeah. As of today, the Black Crest of Death, the Gold Reef of War, this is definitely getting yet another playthrough at some point today, leading into Antichrist Rise to Power. Again, you can't go wrong with this combination, and once I get the dripping papples blood or whatever. I don't know why I keep fucking that title up, but once I get that bad boy, oh yes, we will have the unholy trifecta of departure chandelier. Hail Satan and yeah. Hails to nuclear war now for reissuing all this gnarly shit. Seriously. Thank you. Thank you to the Patreon account. Thank you to the band I am doing vocals with that, you know, made this one a possibility. And, yeah, I can just look at this cover all day. I forgot the poster. Fuck. And thank you, YK. He sent over this mystifier. I, I don't know if it was just an accident, but there's no LP in here, sadly. Because I was like, whoa, he fucking sent like mystifier but then i was like oh man <laughs> but still it's cool as shit having like just this classic right here in perfect condition but no lp but let me real quick show you the poster because it's fucking badass oh wait that's blacker days sorry Oxygen Destroyer, sorry. I have a lot of posters next to me. All right, here we go. Yes. Oh my God. I love that photo. I just don't have any room at all. 
but this bad boy I would like to get framed but I don't know if I do get this framed it's going in the Milmont mausoleum but I love I love it the black crest of death the gold wreath of war black metal I love my other departure chandelier poster as well, but that one's just so dialed. I just fucking love it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for this to go 30 minutes. It's just one of those demos that, trust me, it's worth every second of your time. And again, you don't even have to be the biggest fan of black metal to absolutely enjoy this bad boy to death. The Quebec metal scene is gnarly, and, you know, combining with New York, which also has a gnarly black metal scene, yeah, that barbaric cauldron, when you churn it, I guess the end product is the beautiful yet vicious Napoleonic war black metal that is Departure Chandelier. The black crest of death, the gold wreath of war. A plus, top shelf, black metal on Nuclear War Now Productions. Act quickly, this shit will sell out. As always, thanks for watching, you fucking rule. When I can say more about this music project, I will, but... It's grind, it's gnarly, and it's very fun. So, yeah. But it's also um, from another country, and I really hope that the lyrics do not get this individual into trouble, as they come from a pretty strict area of the world, and the lyrics are pretty punk and, like, crusty. So, yeah, I'm just hoping, you know, everything's cool. I don't want anybody getting in trouble for making music. But the fact that they have a Gmail account, I think I, I'm pretty sure they're good. They have enough internet freedom to have a Google account. So, yeah, I feel like they're safe. I'm safe. Yeah, it's all gravy. Check out the Parcher Chandelier. I'm gonna shut the fuck up. Thanks for watching. As always, hails. <laughs>